Hi, welcome back. Now today I've got some tips that are probably old, new, or just forgotten, but are seriously quite good to actually know if you're playing the game. Now, especially for a new player, some of these are older, not really seen anymore, but still effective. First up, we have turrets through the door. Now, not a lot of people use this anymore. It can be a little glitchy, but it's super effective, especially if you're being raided and you have space to put this down, or if you want to make a trap base. Just having the turrets peeking through a double door actually activates the turrets. Now, this is quite simple to do. You can put it in any way, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. All you have to do is make sure the turrets creep through to a space where people will drop into or come through a door. You can hide this as well, put workbenches in front of it, etc. To do it, it's quite simple. All you have to do is put a staircase in or some sort of object which they can sit on. Then take it as close to the front as you can, as you can see here. Drop it in place, put any ammunition you wanted to put into it, just drop it down, close the doors and leave it. Now, it can't be seen, so I wouldn't use it so much as a definite trap, just more of a way of stopping people from getting to you. It just can be a little glitchy though, but sometimes you'll find if you clear the TC, put the TC back on, it, it works fine. It's an old trick, all the same, but it's a really effective one that we used to use quite a lot. Next we have fast upgrading, now I didn't know about this for absolute years until I seen it a couple of years back. All you do is pick what you want to upgrade to, hold down the right click, then hold down the left click and just spam with right click. Make sure you only have the resource you want to upgrade to in your inventory because it will just keep going through metal, HQM and all the way up, sometimes it even demolishes. Now one for all you 2x2 raiders or first day raiders as the wipe. If you are trying to find someone's TC, because let's face it, everyone uses the triangle shelf with a TC in there. All you have to do is take a building plan and run around with the floor and try and spam it. Whereas if it comes out a funny angle, that is guaranteed to be probably where the TC is going to be. Simple and effective. Now, lots of squares and triangles. So if you're only going to go for one wall, that's the wall probably to take. Now, will it always be that wall? Absolutely not. However, probably 9 times out of 10 is definitely going to be. Now a little bonus as well, when it's day 1 and you are trying to make sure you get the most effective raids possible, people are using double doors, when they're using stone, it actually shows you outside where it is. This only works with stone though, so if you come outside and you look around you can see up here, the little bit there which is actually sticking out, so it gives you an idea of what type of doors I've got as well, if it's stone frames etc. It's a little bonus for you, um, as effective, the one to use, as you can see when it's down, normal door frames don't show like that, it's only the double door frame. Next we have the flashing siren, now this thing is like the multi-tool of rust, honestly you can use it for loads of little things, it's quite handy to have and you always find them lying around. Use them in your base for little jump ups or if you're making little peaks for your roof and stuff, so you can just come up, you can see here, if I actually manage to get up it where you can just use it to peek down etc, just fire through, simple and effective, save your trick jump and box here and finale else get it to the height you want. Also if people are prone to jump up on your base, you can put them to stop people putting any sort of twig on your base as well, super effective, it, who cares if it looks stupid, it works, it stops people from jumping up your base, with that as its prime objective. And last of all, if you are getting raided and they go through the doors, Put these little buggers down and no one can get through your door. So you can open your door, someone can shoot from the other side, you can see if they get shot, it doesn't make a difference because they can't get in. So it's an effective little thing to use. Honestly, these are really effective. They don't get enough praise for what they are and they're super durable. Next is a very simple one but effective one. If you are on a busy server or you're going offline, have a heartbeat sensor or a timer on a door, a door that isn't really used for anything, like in some sort of airlock passage you've got keeping your base do definitely do not do it in front of your tc so it opens the door as people pass by or opens it intermittently every like 30 seconds this means people will think you are online have a beacon inside so if you are inside it's effective that way as well you know people are outside this just gives the illusion that you're actually online let's face it no one online raids really unless you're a big server most solo servers they're probably going to try you offline to minimize their risk Next is an old one which I don't really see used that often anymore, however it is really effective. Your loot room is the holy grail for you, but if you put a vending machine in, put it all the way to the back 
you can see before you put the door frame in, line it up like this, drop it down, put the door frame down, drop it up, then rotate the actual vending machine itself. You can actually get to the boxes, make sure the boxes are locked. This can be difficult, practice it before you do it. You can actually get to all the boxes because the colliders and the vending machine are great. So it's one to do. It is annoying. I put your main loot in here. Maybe if you're using some sort of automation system, do it that way. However, it's super effective. And you can actually put a door in this as well. So when you go offline, drop the door in. If the door's on, you can't get to the boxes to whatever side the hinge is on. That's the only thing that stops it. So you just have to mess around to get through it. Once you get the sweet spot, you'll know it all the time, honestly. Super effective, just adds an extra layer, especially that early game as well, it's just really good to have. And on the plus side of that, now if you are being raided, it's super simple to drop a vending machine. So if someone's going through your doors, you can just drop a vending machine down as they're blowing the doors through and it will completely block them as they're doing it. Something just to completely stop them. If you push it too far, it will actually push through with the door there. So just be careful because that gives away the game and it can take some sort of damage as well. What you want to do is make sure you have it just pressed against the door. This way, as soon as that door goes, they are not going to be able to get through. And the vending machine sitting there at full HP just waiting to absolutely destroy their day. Very effective. One that used to be used a while ago, but it used to leave big gaps. Now it just from an update it just stops straight at the door so they open it and that is what they see completely disheartened and if they don't have enough boom they aren't going any further and that is them done next is a tip that everyone should really know it is quite old people know it but people forget it if you are being chased by a bear or wolves or as i call them land sharks and rust just jump against a wall and they will stop and turn around very effective honestly use it I hate getting absolutely mauled with little things, but it happens. So one to remember and very effective to use as well. Next, another one that most people probably know but you may have forgot. When you're trying to craft really quickly, use the middle mouse button, just click on it and it will times five for whatever you're trying to make. So it's handy for arrows, bandages, even doors. It just makes life a lot easier. You just spam it and it will work quite quick. Just be careful you don't do the wrong thing, you end up making five high walls when you weren't supposed to it's just one of those a very effective trick it saves a lot of time as well now if like me you've got absolutely no concern to be doing some sort of pixel bunker or early game you just want to get a starter base down you don't know if you're going to stay in the server just do the old sunken bunker it still works perfectly fine really effective and it's easy to put up now i'll just fast forward to this but it takes less than a minute to do it honestly it's so much easier and far more effective then run about try to do 10 squares out 10 squares in then you find out you're moving server in like 10 minutes time because the thing's died or it's you found there's a clan living right next door to you who are going to make your life a living hell every second of the day that you're trying to do anything these are very effective and very simple and very very strong and you can hide the fact you can build this into any base really it's it's honestly i don't know why people do the pixel gaps they are not super effective or efficient all you have to do is Put the roof piece on the twig and drop it every time you come in. Upgrade it to stone, you can see through the wall, but if you do it to metal, it hides most of it away and you just keep building around it. And say this is an effective starter base just to get it done or a farm base just to tuck it away. So if people come through the doors, they're not going to go any further. This is just a blank canvas for it, but honestly, don't do pixel bunkers if you're just going to stay in a server for a little while. Just do something simple like this, save yourself the time and the effort.